Hey guys, it's Joel and welcome back to the channel. Now, last time round, I explained how I felt lied to by the dealer that sold me my Maserati Quattroporte. This car has a number of issues, one of which being quite a major one with the engine that wasn't disclosed to me before I purchased the car. That video received hundreds and hundreds of comments from you all, and so I thought I'd give you a very quick update at the start of this video. I have now spoken to the dealer on the phone, and we are now working together to come to some sort of agreeable conclusion, which makes me very happy, because as you can probably imagine, my ideal situation is to keep this car as I am very much loving it. In the background behind all of these videos you're seeing, I am working together with this dealer now and with Ash at Exotic and Supercar to try and work out if there's any way we can come to an arrangement of fixing the engine issue. And of course, I will continue to keep you all updated. And let's remember, of course, that this is a car channel. And despite this being a reality of buying cars like this, my ultimate aim is to show you how much fun you can have by buying a car that was once very expensive and is now quite cheap. And so this morning we're doing quite a few miles in the Maserati as I'm heading up to see some old friends of mine. We're going to completely transform this car. So I decided then that I might as well get my Maserati Quattroporte looking as good as I possibly can. And G Technic actually got in touch and offered to send me out some of their best products and sponsor this video. And to be honest, I felt a little bit out of my depth when they turned up. I wasn't quite sure exactly how to use them. And so I contacted my good old friends at iValet UK, who are gonna help me through the process today and get this thing looking absolutely fantastic. So please everyone, welcome Rob back to the channel. You will have seen Rob before if you've been a subscriber for a while, because we've done quite a few of my cars together. These guys are absolutely fantastic. They've always completely transformed things for me, like that CLK where the interior basically went from brown to white. The 7 Series, the Range Rovers, we've done all sorts, haven't we? We have, yeah. I think the Spider's Eggs was the standout for me. Oh, that was on the green Range Rover. It was, yeah. But we've, uh, we've been through numerous projects, haven't we? And this is obviously the latest iteration so looking forward to getting stuck in. And I have to say, this is probably the one I'm most excited about because we're gonna go really in depth, aren't we, aren't we, on this? I mean, it doesn't look on the surface like it's not completely filthy, it's not covered in mud, but when you look a bit closer, there's a lot of scratches. This car's not been the best looked after, after in the last 10 years at least. And so I think this is really going to make this paintwork pop again. Yeah, totally agree. Um, we had a quick look earlier. We haven't had it under the lights yet, but the surface definitely feels very rough. Yeah. Uh, you can hear it to touch. So we'll get a good clay bar on it, get the preparation right. And like you said, G-Technic products, they've sent you a really nice goodie pack there um, so we'll run through those as well fantastic and I should just mention people will be saying well what about the interior well to be honest as I've mentioned before and I've shown you the interior is actually in pretty good nick in terms of the seats and the leather it doesn't really need that much attention the only thing that really needs doing on that is the sticky buttons but that's something I'm going to try and remedy myself at a later stage so yeah today is purely going to be a focus on the outside of the car and I'm really excited about this So the reason why we start with the wheels first is because they're generally the dirtiest part of the car. There's no point in doing all the slow foam and all the fancy stuff without cleaning the wheels first because we're going to end up creating more dirt and more work for ourselves afterwards by cleaning the wheels second, third. So the process for the wheels is to, um, we use an EZ wheel brush to do all the barrels. The barrels generally holds most of the dirt um, and then a wash mitt for the faces. So next up after the wheels, we have the snow foam. It's a bit like an all-purpose cleaner mixed with shampoo, that kind of thing. And the idea is the foam sits on the surface of the car long enough and wet enough for it to start breaking down all of the grime that's in all the nooks and crannies, the scuttle, door sills, the badges, the trims, and also the surface itself. And I've always wondered, because I'm someone that cleans my car at home quite a lot, I always want to know what's the key to getting the best snow foam, the thickest snow foam. So there's two elements to the thickest foam. One is the actual lance that you're using. So you can get an adjustable lance, which will allow more or less water to mix with the product that you're using. So the more product that you use, less water, you'll get thicker foam and also the foam itself. So Rob, whilst they're cleaning the car behind us very nicely, actually, I thought we'd just quickly go through what was included in this G-Technic box, because you said that there was a lot of goodies in here. Indeed, yep. So we'll start off with the cloths. These are the MF1 microfibers from G-Tech. 
and these are what we would use to remove the ceramic coating. So once we've applied it, the last thing that we want to do is create little micro scratches as we're buffing it off. And these are super soft, they're really delicate, they're great for things like glass, interior, black plastic trims, uh, screens, things like that. Yeah, really soft. I could honestly use that as a pillow to be honest. <laughs> it's very soft indeed. And then yeah, so the panel wipe, I've not seen that before. Can you explain a little bit about that? Yep, so panel wipe is used as a degreaser for polish. So when we polish the car and get rid of all the swirls and all the deeper scratches that are in the surface, panel wipe is the next stage to wipe off the polish with to allow us to get the ceramic coating to bond properly. Mm. If we don't use the panel wipe and we just go with polish and then ceramic on top, the ceramic can't stick to the paintwork. Okay, so that's quite an essential thing to do. And then obviously wheel and paint cleaner is the iron thing. That's, that's what makes the wheels go all pink when we sprayed them on earlier yeah. very satisfying exactly that so there's various types of fallouts that you could encounter whilst driving your car in in general conditions you can get tar spots from uh, the tarmac on the road iron fallout is something that you would accumulate and not always realize until you sprayed that on and it turned purple and you go oh wow that's that's having a huge effect on the clarity of my paintwork mm. prime example if you drive to a train station and you commute into work a lot of iron fallout from the train tracks and you spray that on the car and it takes off all the little orange dots so the next product that we've got in the box is the g-wash which is a really nice ceramic and wax safe shampoo it's pretty gentle it's a general cleaner uh, shampoo cleaner for cars that are fairly well kept on top of um, and the all-purpose cleaner which is the one next to it is what we used on the door shuts and inside the fuel filler cap that's the one that's got slightly more aggressive bite to it that you'd use with a detailing brush to get in the dirtier areas and places like the inside the boot actually the boot shuts and that fuel filler cap area to me looks like they probably have never been done because i mean when you go to a hand car wash or even a motorized car wash it will never ever go inside to the door shuts or the boot shuts i mean there was literal mold in the in the boot area there so that's really handy to uh, to have for going into those nooks and crannies and then we've got the ceramic coating stuff i think haven't we so there's one here for the wheels called wheel armor so this one is actually designed to resist brake dust uh, higher temperatures things like that so the wheels is the area of the car that takes the biggest impact in terms of dirt and grime and this is formulated to be able to resist that so you could if you wash the car regularly enough you could just effectively use a jet wash on the wheels you wouldn't need any chemical um, over the course of time you'd want to use some sort of product like the iron fallout remover just to give a little bit more bite and then the last two boxes we have the crystal serum light and the g technic exo which are the paint works ceramic coatings right yeah so the crystal serum light is your base coat um, this one will bead it will sheet water but its sole purpose really is to protect give you that layer of protection right so industrial fallout bird lime etchings things like that that will prevent those from happening if you do get it the warranty is really good with that product as well and then you've got the exo which will happily sit on top and bond to the csl that one's the one that gives you the really nice water behavior if you drive through a storm you come out the other side of it and your effectively car is dry and for anyone watching the video if you haven't used exo yet really really cool product very easy to apply to take back off again and the effect that you get from that water is addictive okay so believe it or not this car is not actually done yet in fact we're not even halfway there but it looks absolutely incredible so far it's had a full decontamination wash they've ran the clay bar over it and i don't know what it looks like on the camera but the wheels in particular are absolutely glistening i can't quite believe how good it looks and from a distance the paintwork looks pretty good pretty fantastic i mean look at the wheels on this side i could totally do my makeup in those but what we're going to do next then i believe is get it inside get it under some lights then the guys are going to give the car a machine polish then we can look at the ceramic coating but it does i mean it's mad to think this car cost me less than six thousand pounds this is exactly what i love doing on this channel buying cars like this and yes we know that this one is not without its issues whether i can drive it home or not after this we don't really know but you can buy these incredible things for so cheap and we were just talking about it off camera actually i wonder if i went into central london now pulled up to the savoy and asked the gents to park it out front for me whether they would turn up their nose at me or maybe they would just comply when they saw the bad and the beautiful presentation of the car i don't know but it's lovely nonetheless to see it looking so wonderful and it's only going to get better from here 
So the way that a car presents itself to the human eye is very, very specific on the way that it's been polished in the first place. The shinier the car is dependent on the less refraction in the light source that you're working with. So the reason why we polish the car first is to try and remove as many swirls and as many, as many marks in the surface as we can. Light travels in a straight line. So it comes in in one direction and it comes back out. If there's lots of swirls, it refracts in lots of different directions and therefore it will make the light that's coming in not as sharp when it goes back out again to the human eye. When it can only travel in a straight line, the surface that you're looking at appears much more reflective and so you effectively get a shinier car. After we've spent a whole load of time polishing the car, removing the swirls, making sure that light is refracting in a single line or as close to into the human eye, we have to make sure that we try and keep the car as swirl free for as long as possible, which is where the G-Technic ceramic coatings come in. What they allow is the surface to become much harder and more resistant to new swirls forming in the future. And so by applying the ceramic coating, we're effectively locking in and sealing in the fresh swirl-free paintwork, making it harder to inflict more swirls of damage in the future, creating more refraction. So the polishing work's now complete. Most of the swirls and the deep scratches have now been removed. We've got a nice fresh surface to be able to panel wipe. Um, we showed you the panel wipe previously. That is the spray which degreases the panels and allows the base coat, the Crystal Serum Light, to adhere properly to the fresh surface. So that is now on the car as well. Panel wiped, CSL, Crystal Serum Light is the base coat. And just to recap, that product itself is designed as the protective layer. That's not your fancy water beading. That's the one that's gonna give you the nice um, sealed, fresh, resistant layer to the elements to make sure that the swirls stay back for the future. Obviously, we're gonna expect Joel to keep on top of the car nicely with his fancy two bucket method and his snow foam. Um, but yeah, that, that will certainly aid with giving the outer shell a much harder layer. We've then got the EXO going on the top. That's the one that's gonna give you the nice water behavior, the beading, the water flying off the side of the car um, at sort of 30, 40 miles an hour down the road. Um, so yeah, that's where we're at. We've also given the interior a quick tidy. The leather needed um, just a sort of a wipe over and a little bit of a scrub up, which it's got. And we did that whilst we were waiting for the Crystal Serum Light base application to dry before we put the EXO on. It's always a good idea to leave it for a little bit of time to cure and to do its thing to allow the EXO to bond on top of the Crystal Serum Light. The application of the C5 wheel armor is just going on as we speak. This is the a slightly harder coating for the wheel surfaces as well, um, which also acts in the same way that it does on the paintwork, but for the wheels which are taking a lot more abuse, a lot more brake dust, a lot more grime, um, which are gonna need the heaviest cleaning. Once they're sealed up, as we said previously, you should just be able to use a jet wash and, and wash the surfaces straight off. Uh, and then each wash that you, that, that you go along, you can judge if you need to add a cleaning product, a cleaning agent like the iron fallout remover alongside your standard wash method. Well, what can I say? This thing looks absolutely incredible. We've just pulled it outside and it's hopefully being picked up on the camera, but compared to what it looked like earlier, the paintwork just looks immaculate now. It does almost look factory fresh, but I'm genuinely quite surprised at how well it's come out. I was saying to some of the guys earlier, it, under the lights in there, and hopefully if the sun comes out later, I can see again, but there's a sort of subtle gold fleck in this paintwork, which I'd never seen before. And my favorite thing has to be those wheels. <laughs> For some reason, especially on that side, they're just absolutely gleaming. I mean, 
like a, a straight up mirror. And now of course with the application of the ceramic coatings, it should pretty much stay this way as long as I look after it. Please uh, don't stop bringing them to us either, you know. We love working on little projects like this yeah. with you and start to finish to transform something from a little bit rough around the edges into looking like you say almost factory fresh again is is very satisfying on our part as well so now i've just got to hope that it doesn't blow up on the way home <laughs> but then at least i mean if that happens i've got a beautiful beautiful art installation that i can have on my driveway <laughs> so um let me say big thanks again to i valet uk for helping me out with this video today and also to g technic for making it possible sending me these incredible products link down in the description if you're interested in getting your hands on some of those for yourself and yeah, just thanks again, Rob, especially for all of your insights today. I've genuinely learned a lot and this is not the first time we've done this. So it's been really, a really, really good day. And I hope you've all enjoyed the video as well. So thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one very, very soon. Bye.